Hello again. Welcome back. Today, we talk about the presentation of your figures on display paints and how to make them. I frequently see people put a lot of work into the painting of their figures, but rarely do I see people put an equal amount of effort into the presentation of said paintings. As our field of figure painting becomes larger and larger, we would do well to take mind of the presentation of our figures as much as we do the painting of them. Display pillins push a viewer to view a figure more as an art form rather than as a game token. The actual pillin itself is as much a color in your composition as anything that you're using on the painting itself, like yellow ochre or ultramarine blue, and it will help provide certain sensations and lead your viewer to view the figure in a specific manner. Creating pillins is also a very fun and interesting side activity to our hobby. Ultimately, if you want your figure to be taken seriously, it helps to present it in a serious light. Bases come in a variety of different styles, but I find that they come in two basic varieties. Rounds and squares. Square bases have only four sides they are supposed to be viewed from. The front, the back, and two side views. Meaning that they are going to have four identifiable viewing points for your figure. Some may benefit from having four viewing points, but some may have a more open sculptural component and thus invite a viewer to view it at a 360 degree angle, which a round base is more suited for. Since the round bases have no identifiable front to them, they are best used on figures that have no identifiable front or back facing viewing point and are thus meant to be used in the more 360 degree manner. Whichever you end up using, a round base or a square, should be thought of before you start painting, as the actual presentation of the figure may not benefit a 360 degree view. And conversely, sometimes some figures only look good from one angle, in which case square bases will be to your benefit. As square bases are ultimately significantly easier to create, as a round base usually requires you to grind down wood with a lathe, we'll focus on these square bases for today. While the art store and general craft stores you see around may have suitable wood for simple pieces, if you want a more sophisticated look, you'll need to go to a source of more sophisticated goods. So it's time to take a trip to the wood store. Therein you'll find all sorts of woods, all different properties. But we are trying to look for woods that are not going to pull the eye away from the artwork. So, we're going to want woods that are darker, but dark woods are also quite expensive, so you're a bit limited in what you have available budget-wise on what woods you can get. But things like wenge, dark walnut, Indian rosewood, and African blackwood are reasonably affordable woods in order to make these pieces from. The best source for good generic bases comes in the form of turning blanks. These are chunks of wood that are meant for spinning and cutting on a lathe, but many of them are the perfect dimension for figures. These are 2 inch squares here, and they are first very good for making basic bases. Oddly shaped turning blanks are also really good sources for bases. Most of these have pieces of live edge on them, that is, wood from areas from the outside edge of a tree. Their strange shapes can spark the imagination as to what kind of scenes they can contain. For our example, we're going to work a nice presentation base and a large round cheap base. Power tools like saws are certainly helpful for making bases, but they're not needed. You can cut a section of a turning blank with a simple saw and a miter box, of which you can get as a kit. When it comes to actually making the base itself, the dimensions of a presentable base should not be too large or small for the figure in question. How large or small depends greatly on the context of what you're doing, but try to work out how large the base should be before you cut any wood. As competition pieces frequently have dimensional limits, read any rules before you start committing to your base size, as if a base is just a little too large, it's probably not going to qualify. I like using three grades of sandpaper for wood. Around 100 grit, around 200 grit, and around 400 grit. The exact number on the sandpaper is not super important, as long as they're around the same category of rough, semi-rough, and fine sandpaper. Make sure you sand the wood in the direction of the grain to get a smooth finish. 
The exact amount of how much you need to sand depends wildly on the type of wood, the quality of the paper, and what kind of final appearance you desire. But a good maxim for sanding is that of a bath. When you're clean, you get out. More sanding of the same grit doesn't lead to a better end result. If the wood looks good and it feels good, you're done. After which, all you need to do is vacuum off any excess dust. To ensure a finish has the best possible look, we need to remove the embedded dust or oil from the pores of the wood with a bit of solvent. Now you could use turpentine here, but that stinks of VOCs, so I use Gamsol, since I have it around for my oil painting. Gamsol is a white spirit that has been strained of all of its noticeable scent, so it isn't too bad for you when you inhale it. However, it is still a solvent, so maybe crack a window when you're doing this. Afterwards, you can place the wood near an open window with a fan, and the wood will dry out in a few minutes. You could leave the wood unfinished in its natural state. A finish is not needed for a protective quality on something like this, but I like the appearance of them. Finishes can impart desirable looks to the wood, as well as giving a resistance to scratches or blemishes. There are many ways to finish wood, but many are difficult to do, require more specialized hardware, or otherwise impractical for the scope of that we're doing here. To me, there are three types of finishes that are applicable here. Boiled linseed oil, varnish, and stain. Boiled linseed oil is a flaxseed oil, boiled with cobalt salts, to reduce its drying time. The resulting appearance of oil gives the wood a slightly satin finish and brings out the grain of the wood, so sand it well or have your mistakes be shown. In brief, it gives the wood the most natural appearance of our three choices, and it's the easiest to use. Literally just take a paper towel or a rag, apply some oil to it, and rub it into the surface. The pores of the wood will soak up all the oil, and it will dry overnight, or longer if the wood happens to be a bit oily. You'll want to remove any excess on the surface, or else it will dry tacky. And that's it. Job done. The downside of oil is that it is the least protective of all finishes, and provides almost no resistance to scratches or water. Thankfully, these are art pieces and not kitchen tables, and thus they're not going to be seen much wear. This is my go-to for display pilts. Varnish is a gigantic category of finishes that are of various kinds of polymers that can be rubbed into a wood to give them a strong shell that resists scratches and blemishes. It's the same class of finish that is put onto hardwood floors. In this case, wipe on polyurethane. This comes in a satin and gloss variety, depending on what you desire. The same rules apply for oil in terms of application, but you'll likely need at least two coats to get the right kind of feeling. Once you've done one coat of varnish, let it dry overnight and lightly sand it down with some 400 grit paper. Dust it, and then put another coat on top of it. You can repeat this as many times as you want, getting a thicker, more satin, glossy, and resistant finish each time. Varnish gives it an excellent protection for its layers, but it does have a caveat in that it will darken orange with age. You see this on a lot of oil paintings that have been varnished. This usually isn't a problem, as wood is brown as it is, which is the dark version of orange, so the color rarely hurts the final appearance, and it takes decades to be noticed. Stains are not true finishes, but a preliminary step to them. They're used to impart a certain look to wood, generally cheaper woods, to make them appear a certain way. They certainly have a use in making cheaper woods look nice. However, when I want a black wood, I want it to be as neutral as possible to keep the viewer on the subject at hand. This stain, while effective at showing a lot of grain, is a little bit too transparent for my liking. In that regard, oil paint does the job much better. You could use acrylic paint to do this, but I like the way the oil looks on the wood, as it behaves as a very, very strong stain. Acrylic paint fills the pores and smooths the surface of the wood more than oil does, which will sink into the wood and keep its texture. After you've stained the wood, you'll have to go over it with a true finish in order to actually give it any kind of protection. As you can see, a figure really comes to life when it has a nice presentable pilt in order to present itself. The variety that you can get out of them and the different styles you have really give you a whole lot of options on how to display your figures in a more sophisticated manner rather than just a gaming manner. 
I hope you learned something from all this, and employ what I taught to help make your own pieces stand out from the crowd, and really push our field of figure painting as an artistic medium rather than just a niche nerd hobby. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing. You can always ask any questions you have in the comments down below, and please consider checking out my website where you can see a portfolio of my work, and if you really, really liked my work, consider getting yourself a commission. Take care, and have a good one.